Wow, it's dark. Yes, and it's only 5.30. So we have time for, oh my goodness. It's not an afternoon, an evening story. Every day we try to read one. And I happen to have this here. Lift every voice and sing. This is by, well, it's a pictorial tribute to the Negro National Anthem. And we know James Weldon Johnson wrote this. You know, uh, maybe you didn't know. He was the first person in that area in Florida to, I think the first African-American to pass the bar. All right, so he was a lawyer and also he was a teacher. He was a principal. Yes, he was. And he was in his 20s when he was doing all this. And you know that he became a leader in the NAACP. And he wrote this poem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, to commemorate Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Right? Someone was visiting and they were commemorating the former president's birthday and his brother John Rossman Johnson put music to the poem and there you go get the Negro National Anthem so it's a little history for you and let's dive in who did this from the introduction by Henrietta Smith over time, Lift Every Voice and Sing has become one of the most honored compositions ever created. Perhaps this is so because the song's lyrics are all inclusive. It sure enough is. They embody a special and personal message for most listeners. Faith, full of the faith that the dark past has taught us belief. Let us march on till victory is won. The power of prayer, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. So this is wonderful and We just had a little introduction, so let's let's dive in. I'm just wondering who compiled these pictures, this compilation. It says, yeah, at the age of 23, he was appointed principal at Stanton High School. I knew he was in his 20s. He graduated from high school at the age of 16. He was a very scholarly student, and that was in Jacksonville, Florida that uh, he passed a bar. His mother was a school teacher, Helen Dillett Johnson, and she also was an accomplished musician who gave piano lessons to her younger son, John. And his father was a head waiter at the prestigious St. James Hotel. And he was exemplified. He was known for his hard work ethic and it was passed down to his son. So this is wonderful. Just something to really admire. Oh, here it goes. He studied law and became the first African-American to be admitted to the Florida bar. So not only Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida, but the whole state of Florida. Wow. But for this creative gentleman, the practice of law was not a satisfying occupation because he had a creative gene. Oh, I hear you. He soon turned his attention to the study of literature and creative writing. After intensive work with his professor, he wrote a novel, right? And then he just started writing so many. Oh my goodness. Then he, his brother, John, graduated from the New England Conservatory of Music in 1897. Will you listen to this? And then they journeyed to New York where he found success writing musical scores for vaudeville shows and Broadway plays, including a version of Porgy and Bess. That's John Rossman. And then that's when in 1900, James and John composed Lift Every Voice and Sing for Abraham Lincoln's birthday. After they composed a the song, 500 Young Voices, 500, gave it life by performing for the birthday celebration. And that's how the NAACP adopted it. Wow, this is wonderful. And I think Henry Etta Smith is the one who compiled all these photographs. All right, let's dig in. Man, I didn't know about some of this information, but I knew about these beautiful pictures. Okay, look at this. 
Oh, and of course, in the background is my favorite person to play this, Cyrus Chestnut. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Yes. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Did you go to church today? Yeah, I went to a couple services. Enjoyed myself. It's nothing like giving gratitude and thanksgiving every single day. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Oh my goodness. I remember when I first saw this. And I, I made a lithograph of this for our art class because it, it spoke to me so much. I wonder, do I have it here? I forgot that there are kids saying this, but this is reality. So near the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yeah. Oh, yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We worked so hard. And that hard work ethic, that's why I, we don't have the luxury to be lazy. We don't have the time to waste in school or anywhere, any opportunity. We're trying to help Whoever, whoever will receive help. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Oh. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Oh, think about your ancestors. You have pictures like, like this one. I know I do. And I love to look at them. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Mm. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Ah, and then there you go. Here's the music. Ah, this is beautiful. So let us always remember. And this is a picture of James Weldon Johnson. Is there anything else I can, I can add? He died in 1938. He also was a professor. We know he's a civil, he was a civil rights leader. It just makes you want to run and, and do great things because of the legacy that we all share. So let's go on. Thank you, Henrietta Smith, for compiling this. And we will remember and we will spread hope, joy, and faith. Have a good evening. <laughs>